A 53-year-old man with failing eyesight who had recently undergone intestinal surgery told Sonoma, California police that on Sunday afternoon, May 1st, 2011, by the way, a woman had come to his home and instructed him to drop his pants and get face down on the bed so that she could administer an enema. (laughs) He said he assumed his doctor had sent her and thus complied. It was over (laughs) in two minutes and she was gone. The doctor later said he had no idea who the woman was. (laughs) (laughs) How How skeptical would you be (laughs) if a nice old lady comes to your door? Instructed him, drop his pants and get face down on the bed. So did he just like drop his pants and undies and just like shuffle to the bedroom? (laughs) I don't. (laughs) Thanks for that mental image. Uh, It's Emina time. Emina? Emma, Emina, Emina. En, enter, Anima. That's what I said, Emina. You're not saying it. I am saying it. I'll play you back the recording. You're saying Emina. No, I'm not. End. Anima. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm treating you like a four-year-old boy <laughs> trying to repeat my words. En, so, yeah, Enema. En, well, now you're saying it right, but it's recorded. What? I'll just I said play it, it back I said Enema last time. You won't. You won't. I will highlight this later. Let's forget yeah. this. Well, I feel like we can't progress now. You're making fun of the British language. I'm not making fun. I'm the just. Queen I was just. I was just this. recording. Or uh, re- uh, I was just. Enema. What was wrong? Enema. Yeah, you're saying it right now. No, well, we well, have I to stop. It's, it's a matter of time. honor. It's a matter of honor. Well, it's a real good conversation starter. <laughs> the 1999 version with Ron Jeremy which only gets a 4.1 what a creepy guy he is isn't he yeah I never understood like I remember him from sneaking out pornos when I was a kid it's it's weird <coughs> that... I saw a a gif of him he's right next to a waterfall he's naked on the rock and he just starts licking his own penis he just he goes he goes at it <laughs> does he sound Jeremy. like a little bird <laughs> what are you doing? Why is he? I guess the waterfall is a nice touch. <laughs> You're focusing on the unimportant details. Yeah, I guess. Here. Well, like I can't remember him ever being at a physical state. I mean, I get that he's some sort of stallion or whatever. Yeah, I'm big... gonna ruin my Google search history now. From <laughs> Jeremy, Alex, own penis. God. From Jeremy think... sucks his own dick. <laughs> You're too polite with Google. Uh, Ron Jeremy uh, orally fixated on his own member. No, Ron oh, I haven't even seen this one. Oh, <laughs> now Pornhub just recommended me self suck action. <laughs> you might also pretty- like other men sucking themselves off. <laughs> oh, this is the one. Yeah, there's the waterfall. He's looking around, making sure no one can see him. <laughs> well, why would you go to a waterfall that completely eliminates your ability to <laughs> hear intruders so unfair. he has to stretch his donger I mean this is a risky click and I don't know if you want to but it's, it's worth a watch <laughs> alright <laughs> yeah. I forgot how good of an actor he is pretending he's looking around <laughs> It looks like he's really pulling his balls up there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, don't... Oh, he is a nasty motherfucker. <laughs> Imagine you're hiking in the woods. <laughs> in love with nature. Why am I still watching this? <laughs> Imagine you just like walking, appreciating nature, and then you're just like, oh, man... Ron Jeremy's fucking sucking his own dick again. <laughs> but he's not even sucking, he's just like tugging it. Yeah, he was kind of assaulting it. <laughs> like looking around all shady. God. I wonder how much you get for sucking yourself off in the porn world. 
Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess, I guess that's good. <laughs> now you're asking the important questions. <laughs> Have you ever had a, a memory, a good memory, a cherished memory, perhaps, that that ended up getting soiled because while you were having the memory, something else happened, and then you couldn't you couldn't separate the two memories? Let me let me give you an example. I was walking uh, through the woods in this this large state park. It was nice. I was out in the slightly more remote parts. And I see this dude ahead, and he's kind of dressed like my father might have dressed, at least what I saw, and he had kind of similar looks. And it immediately reminded me of my father, and I had this rush of memories that mm -hmm. I, I remembered. Uh, my dad was never really an outdoorsy kind of guy, but at one whatever affair where there was like a picnic or something big, big to do there was some woods nearby me and the other kids were you know down fucking about by the water and it's just a really good memory of like my dad kind of coming down just to see what's going on and you know summertimes kids carefree powerful memories powerful memories powerful emotions are, mm. are surging the through good me ones. the good stuff yeah good, yeah good feels yeah and you know, all that's going through me, and uh, I'm walking further up the trail now, and I realize the dude's getting a, a hand job from a crackhead. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, God, why? <laughs> so that that type that really spoiled that memory. Now I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't. I just, oh, motherfucker. All right, this is the. The Craigslist. This is the This is the title. Where are we? Where are we? San Antonio from 2010. No more sex with fruit. It all started when I started dating this woman whom I was crazy for. I had been in love with her since high school. From time to time she would want me to stick a banana in her before sex to get her in the mood. At first, it was awkward. <laughs> Especially if, you, especially if you wanted that banana. It eventually got to a point where I, was too, I too was having sex with fruit as a kind of foreplay. Don't judge me. I was head over heels for this woman and would do anything to make her happy. I never let her know in the beginning I was a little annoyed and jealous that a banana was penetrating her wet vagina. Then, I also never told her in the beginning how odd and freaky I felt the first time I stuck my penis into an orange. Although I did like her licking off the juice afterwards. I also never told her after countless times bring fruit, bringing fruit into our bedroom that I started to like it. And that I sometimes had sex with fruit while she was away at work. So that time you got upset that the last apple was missing, Jeffrey really didn't come over to visit and ate it. I had sex with it. <laughs> then one day she left me. That's when I went into a deep depression. However... That depression did not stop me from continuing to have sex with fruit. I was completely satisfied even in my depressed state. If you cut the correct size hole into anything, it could be magical. When I ejaculated, I of course would throw it away. But there was one time or two the sex was amazing, so I kept it around for another go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then came the day when I got over the evil woman who had broken my heart. I started to hate everything about her which brought me to a point where I started to doubt whether or not I should continue to enjoy having sex with fruit since she introduced me to it. Around that time, I was very confused on what I should do next. I happened to see the evil wench. I happened to be on a different side of town and needed to run to the store for some fruit roll-ups, ironic, I know, for my niece's lunch the next day. <laughs> I would think fruit roll-ups would be more fuckable. Anyway. I strolled into the grocery store like nothing. I was just about to make a comment inside my head about how ghetto the store was when I saw her. I'd heard rumors that she moved on and was seeing someone. But this time she was solo. I pretended that I did not see her, but I was too late. She spotted me. Damn! I knew I should have gone to another checkout lane. I said hello and had a forced short conversation. 
I couldn't help but notice the fucking fruit she was buying. You fucking cunt, like I'm not supposed to know that those bananas, apples, and oranges were for? I was pissed. I decided no more sex with fruit. That was the final straw. Fuck that bitch and her kinky sexual outlets. That lasted all but a few days. <laughs> and I began to get horny. No, I couldn't do it. I tossed all the fruit out my window. Seems dangerous. <laughs> I was done. I had never paid for sex and wasn't exactly sure how to go about doing that without getting caught. So that was out of the question. I needed stimulation. I needed something. Then, as a spontaneous desperate act, I slammed my penis into the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> the soft, sticky goo... <laughs> The soft, sticky goo made me melt inside. <laughs> what was this utopia of sexual pleasure <laughs> that I discovered? <laughs> I did not know it was more pleasing. The sex with the peanut butter jar or having the dog lick it off afterwards. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot you just got a dog, huh? Hey, we don't, we don't row that way. Are you sure? No. <laughs> if you had to pick a fruit to fuck... Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I mean, it's funny you should say that because, <laughs> you know, a lot of these, you know, if you don't have a, a flashlight or any other, you know, sexual devices, they they recommend that you, you know, use the old watermelon, right? And uh, you're like, who's me, they? What do you mean, who's they? Recommended fruit, watermelon, cantaloupe. <laughs> Actually, now that you mention it, an orange seems way too small. Uh, and I mean, I'm not being. Oh, my and dick's I, big. You know, the juices. I. I hmm. Yeah, citrus. Exactly. I don't. That know. doesn't seem. You get that in your pee hole. I imagine that would burn. <laughs> but you know, you get a melon or whatever, and you just like leave it out in the sun for a bit, so it warms up, and then you just you know <laughs> go to town. <laughs> oh, I they know. also said that you should you know after you've eaten a banana. You can use the banana as like a makeshift cum catching device and put the peel over your wiener, jack off with it, and then just come into the peel. Yeah, but if you had to peel it to get... Well, cause no, because you don't peel it all the way, do you? Yeah, but then if you're jerking off, off with it, I mean, it's not like the structural integrity of a banana peel is that strong. I don't know how lightly other people masturbate, but I would destroy that banana peel. <laughs> Uh, I read a little article that there are zoologists at a university somewhere in Switzerland that recently published, oh, in a, in a British journal here, reported mm. the likelihood that a certain flatworm species has overcome the frustration of not finding a mating partner in its lifetime. <laughs> it has done this in a very special way. The scientists believe that the flatworm exploits its hermaphroditic qualities and injects its sperm right into its own head. <laughs> and then from there, the sperm sometimes migrates to its reproductive facilities. It fucks itself in the head. <laughs> it fucks itself in the head. Now, you know how they know this? I mean, other than watching it fuck its head, but <laughs> the particular species of flatworm that they're researching has a transparent body. Mm. So they can just watch that. <laughs> Funnily, when you mentioned the flatworms, that reminded me um, I was known in my friend's <laughs> group for being the guy with the useless knowledge like of many okay. weird things. I was and wondering where you were going with that, considering the nature <laughs> of the story. Well, I, no, um, uh, I got sidetracked before that, but um, <laughs> I remember, I think they are Australian flatworms that are basically like like snails, like hermaphroditic. Right. And they have a very interesting mating ritual. They, both of species, species has a penis, and they use this penis to, well, fence. They fence <laughs> with another flatworm, and the one losing, i.e. the one getting stuck by the other penis, right. or getting impaled by the other penis, gets impregnated. So they are literally fencing, <laughs> and the one losing gets pregnant. <laughs> and I think Perry, Perry, <laughs> whoa! And I think penis fencing worms is kind of <laughs> yeah. That no, that trumps <laughs> fucking your own head yeah. worms. You can you can Google them. 
<laughs> there's a I don't Wikipedia. think I will be. <laughs> uh, there's a Wikipedia article that I can link you to penis oh, fencing. We're, we're fine. I <laughs> I definitely uh, think that beats the, the head fucking worm. That's just not only do you end up getting the shaft uh, <laughs> by you know being the one that's pregnant, having to deal with that. that means... My name is Intino Montoya. Impregnated my father. <laughs> Prepare to be impregnated. <laughs> but my nameless friend has turned full brony. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of documentaries about bronies, and it's turned into the stereotypical brony, even... So much so that he's got an art commission of himself as a pony fucking well, another pony. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say that's pretty standard <laughs> until you got to that part. It's hard on me, all right? For Christ's sakes. I, I, You're still friends with him, so bravo for not judging his lifestyle. I do, every time we talk. <laughs> Have, uh, all right, let me ask you this. Has... Has he asked you to watch the show in any way, shape, or form, online, in person? Is he, like, That's a religious a freak kid. trying to convert you or lure you to the equine no, side? No, he, he knows that I won't take any of his fucking pony sass. Pony's ass? <laughs> no, pony sass. Yes. Sass. You're gonna, you better not take any of his pony's ass. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> it's my bathroom is like well the the toilet just right next to a radiator right so it's, you, you have to like <laughs> sit down and then you have to like shimmy your your knees to the side I got my you. my anus hasn't been in prime <laughs> shooting position for over a year now have you been and very diagonal about things it's just constantly hitting the ceramic and it's like a a daily cleanup, and I'm getting fucking sick of it. I need like some sort of poo funnel. Was <laughs> was something I shouldn't laugh because <laughs> leave that really to me. My tits. <laughs> Another issue is is because everyone has to sit like that. the The actual toilet seat itself has gotten very loose. Oh, okay. Now you like sense. playing Russian roulette, whether you're going to fall in <laughs> or not. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? Because it's a very accurate description. I know that feeling when you're wiggling around in the seat going, uh-oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> exactly. And the amount of times I've just, you know, grinded my <laughs> grimy cock on the surrounding ceramic is just disgusting. Even though it's my own grime, so I don't wait, like it. Are you talking about roulette in that I was thinking roulette, then it's loose. You could have an accident via it coming loose, whereas you're telling me possibly it could be roulette <laughs> because you could catch some weird grimy shit from <laughs> you gr robbing your junk over it. <laughs> no, you sit on it. And then maybe yeah, I know how to use a, a toilet. Yeah, and then you're in, and then it's <laughs> fucking awful. And then once... <laughs> uh, I don't want to go into it. <laughs> There's too much material you're throwing at me, man. I can't keep up. Oh, I'm flush. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> if that audio clip would be used, it would have cut off right after I said I'm flush. <laughs> there is this, this dude... When we were growing up, Dean Dean the Jelly Bean lost his pants on Halloween. That was a weird little <laughs> nursery rhyme we had for him. I don't think he ever lost his pants on Halloween. How did the rest of that go? Jesus Christ, that poor bastard. We tortured him to hell and back. His backyard was up against the backyard of this dude that lived down the street from me. And we just, I mean, very frequently, almost on a daily basis during the summer, his dog would crap out in the backyard and we'd pick it up with sticks and make a little game of flinging it into their pool. <laughs> like little How is that a game? Well, it's hard to keep the poo on there and then <laughs> fling it off the stick. It's it's a skill game. It's nice yeah. to see your uh, fascination for poo. It's not a not fascination. Mm -hmm. You're still playing poo-type games, aren't you, Phil? 
just Before flinging it. We were doing good, we're cleaning up the yard and throwing poo in Dean Dean the Jelly Beans yard <laughs> in this pool. Well, that's the type of thing. <laughs> it's horrible because you you torture the poor lad for years and years. Everybody everybody in the neighborhood fucks with him. You know, he's just unfortunate. And then I find out years and years later, having a drink with the family and. My mom's like, oh, yeah, I remember, I remember him. It was sad. His parents didn't even have enough money. He would come to the bus stop wearing uh, socks instead of mittens on his hands. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was a very callous laugh you just did there. <laughs> Not enough money for mittens. What a faggot! <laughs> I just imagine the kid there with like his dad's socks way too big for his hands, just dangling there. That's sad. Oh, it's not brilliant. It's not chortling. You do like <laughs> you do that thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, it's a funny image. I want to look him up, but uh, something tells me typing in. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Mary? 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 Sorrentino? Can you spell it for me? S O R E N T Zero. T O? Who? S O R E N T O? That's my name. That's the name. Okay, perfect. Then can I get the full address that you would like us to install our wall tricking? Uh, re repeat that. Can you give us the full address that you would like for us to send the hundred dollar wall tricking? Twelve. Twelve. Street. <laughs> oh, twelve street. Twelve street. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and is this a house or an apartment? Both. <laughs> it's a house? <laughs> Fuck. I'm just curious if you if you can hear any any words, any phrases in what I'm about to play for you, okay? I'm I'm down. Alright, this is stairway to heaven backwards. <laughs> All right, did you hear any words? It sounded, the first part was like, put my foot in something. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to sing along with it and summon the devil. Oh, here's my sweet Satan, the one whose little path makes me sad, whose power is Satan. He'll give us with him six, six, six. Was a little tool shed where he made us up a sad thing. And now oh, maybe you need the actual record. This was a big thing back in the eighties when there was horrible, horrible satanic allegations going on. And so was was it actually done on purpose, or is this just you know someone someone played it some... back? Yeah, and they can kind of think they you know, can hear what that what they've written down and then you read it and then you associate it with that because it kind of sounds like that. It was properly analyzed at one point and the general consensus was that, yeah, it's it's uh, periodola or however the hell you pronounce it. You're just trying to find order in the chaos because it didn't really stand out when I first played it for you, correct? Like you, you heard Sounds kinda... like you were shoving a foot in something Yeah So now that you've heard that What I think The only other really popular one is Another one bites the dust 
doom, doom. Another one bites the dust. So uh, I'll play it backwards. Thank you. No one. No one. Anything? Okay, play it again. One more. It just sounds <laughs> sounds like he's ordering from Subway. It's like I want that sub, a sub, no other. <laughs> I want Is that it... sub, a sub, no onions. I want that <laughs> sub, a sub, no onions. Uh, it's fun to smoke marijuana, is what a lot of people think. Well, uh, even then, I still can. Oh, oh! Don't hurt me, YouTube. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't see it. Yeah, Here, I right. could probably get away with fair use, right? I'm not. I'm, we're, we're oh here. no, YouTube's gonna take its prolonged dick and <laughs> make your <laughs> ass all bloody, my friend. Uh, there's also one for the Pokemon rap. <laughs> if you can believe it, I'm just gonna play them. YouTube can rape me. That's fine. So lyrics here. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Yo. Gotta catch them all, catch them all, yeah. Were you ever into the uh, Pokemons? Uh, it was more Yu-Gi-Oh for me. I, I don't know what that means. Here it is in reverse. <laughs> okay, Gramps. Anything. <laughs> it just sounds like there's a group of people getting ready to spit on someone. <laughs> so I love Satan, I love Satan, I love Satan, I love Satan is what people think they hear. What is it with Satan just uh, popping up everywhere? That's what people want to hear. They want to hear Satan and they want to hear it everywhere. If there was one song where you would expect there to be a backwards message to incite kids to do bad things or to summon Satan, what song or, or band or institution do you think it would be? I don't think it would, would be something imagine obvious. It's like, like some Disney a TV shit. theme or something, you know, like the Teletubbies or something. <laughs> right. Like, you know, get them while they're young sort of thing. Gotcha. You know, go watch. What was it? Who was it? It was. Oh, I don't even remember them anyway. There's that stupid snoo snoo robot <sighs> that uh, extends his nose and like sticks it up the green one's anus and tickles I'm him. Trying to figure out what on God's shitting earth you are talking <laughs> about. A snoo snoo this... robot? Tink Winky. La, all, right, all right, all right. Maybe I should clarify something because perhaps oh. you're describing. I don't know too much about the Teletubbies, other than they were multicolored. And then there was this like. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Have you been watching Teletubbies? <laughs> There's this this robot uh, vacuum. It's called Snoo Snoo or something ridiculous, and uh, they like to drink or eat purple goo or whatever. And then in one episode. I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's the robot that extends his snoo snoo nose and uh, tickles the anus of the green Teletubby. All right, so <laughs> we have gone from a, a relatively innocuous subject, back masking, playing records backwards, to snoo snoo on a Teletubby's <laughs> anus. I don't know if that's its name, but man. <laughs> You asked me. That's Could he a good suck place. a purple off a Teletubby? Fill me up with comics. Was ran ironic. Although it's just the best thing to do. Lose Craig and Dennis. Not the 